Good morning. Good to see you all here in the Lord's house again this beautiful Lord's Day. We've been away for a couple weeks because of inclement weather and I decided to err on the side of caution because of this uh, cold uh, chill factor and uh, fog. It, it was just a lot of the, the parking lot wasn't all that in that good of shape so we decided to not have services the last two Sundays but we're so happy we can uh, be back again this Lord's Day to worship and fellowship together. We want to welcome all of you out there in internet land on Facebook and YouTube and again we would encourage you to try to come and and visit us and worship with us in, in person and a live service at 11 o'clock Sunday morning. I've included a new calendar for February and um, and also I had to rerun the um, officers for uh, this coming year because I made a couple of uh, glaring mistakes on the one I previously handed out. So this is the revised one and uh, the mistakes have been corrected. So please take these and post them on your refrigerator or somewhere near your phone or wherever uh, to help out with that. A few announcements otherwise. Uh, this evening <clears throat> we will be having a having our threefold communion service. This is the only time we have evening services anymore. It's four times a year for our uh, threefold communion services. Also Tuesday, we've had to push this back a couple of weeks because of the weather. At seven o'clock Tuesday, we will be having our annual business meeting. So please take note of that. Um, February 5th will be Elder Board and Ladies Ministries. And then the following uh, Sunday on the 11th, we have uh, decided to have our Valentine's dinner uh, potluck here at the church following the morning service. That'll be around 12.30. Um, I decided to do it on the 11th because uh, again, if there's a problem with the weather, uh, we could always push it back a, a week to the 18th, but we don't want to go beyond that. Okay, a couple more announcements. <clears throat> One very urgent prayer request. The grandson of Pastor Scott Libby, one of his daughters, um, has a newborn child. It's only a what, week a little over a week old, something like that. And it's been having all kinds of problems with breathing, uh, with its heart, with its lungs. And they got it on what they call an ECMO machine. They had it on there, took it off, put him back on. His name is Gus Joubert. And so please uh, pray fervently for little Gus and for his parents. And I forget their names off the top of my head, but he is the grandson of Pastor Scott Libby. Continue to remember our sister Joanne Simpson. I believe she's uh, done now with her uh, chemo treatments, but let's continue to uphold her and Pastor Russ in our prayers and continue to remember uh, the rest of the uh, church family that is on the prayer list. Uh, Mitzi White is now uh, doing much better, and Mindy Burns also. Uh, Gary Lozmack has finished his chemo treatments, and uh, he went back for his checkups, and he was, has been given a clean bill of health. So praise the Lord for answered prayer on their behalf. Okay, if you're reading through the Bible, you should be at Leviticus 1. If you're going through the New Testament, you should be on your... Uh, should be at John, the Gospel of John, chapter 16. All right, I think that's all the announcements I'm going to highlight at this time. So before we get into the Word this morning, let's have a moment of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you again for your goodness and grace, your mercy and love. 
just pray now, Lord, that you would just guide and direct throughout this service, that all that we do and say would honor and glorify you. I pray that you would hide me behind the cross, that your Holy Spirit would anoint my lips, anoint our ears and our hearts, as the message of the gospel goes forth this morning, it would go forth in the power and might of your Holy Spirit. Thus saith the Lord, we ask all these things in your precious and holy name, amen. All right, we are back in the book of Revelation, and this morning we're going to look at one verse, chapter 7, and uh, I've entitled my message this morning, A Description of Our Lord's Return. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible, so please follow along in your Bibles, your swords, as I read. Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him, mourn over him so it is to be. Amen. Some very powerful words there from the Apostle John. Before we get into the word this morning, I have a short story I want to share with you. Uh, some of you will get a kick out of this. The editor of a small town newspaper showed little concern when a tipster phoned in an accident. It was about a truck that had rolled downhill and smashed into a private home. Eh, not interested, said the editor. This kind of thing happens all the time. Well, I'm glad you're taking it so calmly, the boy said. It was your home. <laughs> I believe his countenance changed drastically after hearing those words. All right, we've read our opening verse, Revelation 1:7. And as I said, I've titled my message a description of our Lord's return. And uh, John begins with his opening here with a description of the on the return of, of the return of Jesus. He starts out, "Behold, he is coming." Well, this is a command to look, to check it out. John moved from praising Jesus in the previous verse to describing his return, and he wants us to behold his coming, the coming of Jesus. Jesus said that we should watch and wait for his coming. In Matthew's Gospel, chapter 24, 42, 42 excuse me, he shares this, therefore be on the alert, for you do not know which day your Lord is coming. You know, the late D.L. Moody, that great preacher of the 19th century, was preaching one time on this word, or on this subject, and he had a skeptic sitting about 10, 12 feet right in front of him in the middle row, and he was like this. And he had this look of, of um, he, wasn't, he wasn't buying it, let's put it that way. He was very skeptical of what Moody was saying. So Moody turned to this verse, and of course in the King James, it says, um, Watch ye therefore, for you know not the day nor the hour when your Lord is coming, or the Lord, the Lord is coming in a day which you think not. The man had said, he asked him, Do you think the Lord will return today, sir? And he said, I think not. And Moody gave it right back to him and uh, changed his uh, countenance a little bit with that. So it is something to keep before the eye of our mind to behold. You know, this wasn't a supernatural visit of Jesus' return. The supernatural vision, vision will come later. This description is based upon John's understanding of the Old Testament promises of the Messiah's return and Jesus' own words about his return. For example, John knew that he was coming because Jesus said he was coming. In John 14, 3, Jesus said, I will come again and receive you to myself. Very familiar verse. 
Now Christ at this point had not yet gone to heaven to stay there, but when he had gone, when he did go, he went for the church's benefit. And for their benefit, he will return once again. Then he goes on to say he is coming with the clouds. When Jesus comes, he will be surrounded by clouds. We've got a stained glass window picture here of the ascension of our Lord when he went up and he's going up into the clouds. Well, when he said, as I went, the angel said, just as you see him go, he shall come again in like manner. So he will be surrounded by clouds. This will be true literally, as I just said, because when he left, he was taken up into a cloud. The Lord and God said he would return in the same manner. We find that in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. The angel said this to the disciples as they were standing there with their mouths open, gazing up into heaven as our Lord was taken up and disappeared. And after he had said these things, he was lifted up while they were looking on and on a cloud, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And as they were gazing intently into the sky while he was going, behold, two men in white clothing, those were angels, stood beside them, and they also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into the sky? This Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come in just the same way as you have watched him go into heaven. And not only literally, it will also be true figurative, figuratively because multitudes of believers are called clouds in a figurative manner. We find this in the book of Hebrews where the writer of Hebrews in chapter 12 verse 1 says, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So here all these raptured, or these, these saints who have been uh, taken up into heaven already, are referred to as a cloud of witnesses. So they are commonly associated with God's presence, and glory. And I'm not going to take the time to go there, but you go back to Exodus 13, 21 and 22, Exodus 16, 10, 19, 9, and 24, 15 through 18, you see all of these verses referring to that Old Testament cloud of glory, which was called the Shekinah glory. The Shekinah glory, that's what that all all those verses have reference to that. Well, understanding this connection with the glory of God, it is fitting and wonderful that the multitude of believers is called a cloud. God's people are his glory. They are his cloud or his Shekinah. Also, John didn't need a special vision to know he is coming with the clouds. He knew this from the Old Testament. The writings of Daniel, chapter 7, 13, and 14, and from Jesus' own words, where he said, I tell you, hereafter you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then he goes on, and every eye will see him. When Jesus comes, it will not be a secret coming. This is not the rapture. This is phase two of his second coming called the Revelation or, or the second advent. Everyone will know. At his first coming, Jesus was somewhat obscure. And during his earthly ministry, he never made the front page news in Rome. But when Jesus comes again, every eye will see him. The whole world will know. Now, years ago, when... Uh, preachers preached on this. This was long before we had all the technology we have today. They, they speculated, well, maybe he's going to be uh, uh, have his figure flashed across the heavens in just a huge panorama, you know, and so on. Well, today we have the internet, we have 
all these uh, uh, means of anything that that is um, spectacular, out of the ordinary, or whatever, and someone sees it immediately, it can be put on on the internet or put on the, the television, and uh, they will break in and say, you know, special report or whatever, and I'm sure that's going to happen when our Lord returns. It's going to be something to see. And uh, they're going to behold him. And it, it will be him and the saints and the angels coming with him. And even those who pierced him. When Jesus comes, it will be particularly meaningful revelation for the Jewish people. Of course, it was not the Jews alone who pierced him. But we know John had in mind the revelation of Jesus to his own people because this is a reference to Zechariah 12.10 where the prophet Zechariah said, I will pour out on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jews, Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication so that they will look on me whom they have pierced. That was when he was put on the cross. When Jesus reveals himself to his own people, the Jews, it will not be in anger. By this time, the Jewish nation will have turned to Jesus, trusting in him as their Messiah. Matthew 23, 39, Jesus said this, For I say unto you from now on, you will not see me until you say, Blessed! is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Romans 11, 25 and 26, it says, Paul writes, and so all Israel will be saved. So when they see Jesus and his pierced hands and feet, it will be a painful reminder of their previous rejection of him. It will fulfill the scene of Zechariah 12, 10, where he says, I will pour out on the house of David on the, and the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication so that they will look on me whom they have pierced and they will mourn for him as one mourns for an only son and they will weep bitterly over him like the bitter weeping over a firstborn. Wow. Wow. Well then also, John didn't need a special vision to know even those who pierced him. He could read it in Zechariah 12, 10 for himself. They had the Old Testament scrolls. And uh, John would know that. Every good Jew knew those scriptures, I will guarantee it. Then he goes on, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him. When Jesus comes, it won't be only the Jewish people who mourn because of their previous rejection of Jesus, since there will be people saved from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues. We find that in Revelation 7, 9. So everyone will have a part in this mourning. They will all look at his scars and say, we did this to him. Lastly, John didn't need a special revelation to know all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. He just needed to remember what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 10, or excuse me, 24, 30. He said this, and then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. Wow. When he comes, he will come with the saints and with the angels. And when you read in Zechariah 14, he comes at the battle of Armageddon when it looks like all is lost for Israel, the Jewish people, they have put up a valiant fight, but they are, sub, they are way outnumbered and outmanned. And then our Lord breaks through the clouds and says, In that day his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, 
and he will go forth and fight as he did in the day of battle. And with the power of his, just his tongue, the sword of his mouth, he will slay the legions of the beast. They will be annihilated. And the Jewish people will be saved. And a great victory will be wrought that day. God will glorify himself through his son when he returns. That is, uh, that is such an encouraging uh, portion of scripture there in the end of Zechariah. I just, uh, I've always enjoyed reading that because that's when, that's when the tables are turned on all the evil and hor horrible things that are going on in this world. And following that great battle and that great victory, our Lord will set up his millennial kingdom and rule and reign on the earth for a thousand years. And then it will be merged into the eternal state. What a great victory and great time of rejoicing for those of us who know the Lord as our Lord and Savior personally. If you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior this morning, I would certainly encourage you to do that. The time of his return is so close with what's going on in Israel. My goodness, his, Lord, his return could happen at any moment. So be prepared. Don't be those who are left behind and be deceived by the Antichrist. All right, let's close in a word of prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you again for your precious word, for the precious promises here in uh, the Revelation chapter 1, verse 7. We, we look forward to your return, Lord, with great anticipation. And we just pray that all those out there within the reach of my voice know you as Lord and Savior, but if not, I would pray that they would turn to you before it is eternally too late, we ask in your precious and holy name. Amen. Well, next week, Lord willing, we will look at the next verse where Jesus introduces himself. So stay tuned. All right, that's it for this week. So this is Pastor Bob Mensinger then saying goodbye for now. We hope to see you back here next week, the same time, same station. In the meantime, keep looking up, keep encouraging and exhorting one another, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. All right, goodbye, God bless you. Have a great week, amen.